All right, guys. Uh, here you have a graphing calculator. Now, thank God you have a graphing calculator because this video is going to be much shorter than the ones about a graphing calculator because you'd be surprised at how, uh, very, how well convenient your, your graphing calculator makes these problems. Now, the first few you don't really need a calculator for because everything's already graphed. But it'll help me explain, I guess, what you'll be looking for when you do use your graphing calculator on some of the last few questions. All right, so let's start. Uh, here we have a system graphed on our paper. Now, back in the day when we had systems, when we were talking about them, we, we focused mainly on linear systems, which means we just had two lines graphed on our paper. Uh, but the solution to that system was where the points crossed. Now, that's going to be the case for any system at all. It doesn't have to be two lines uh, or, or two linear lines. It can be any sort of shapes or lines. The answer is going to be where those two cross. All right, so here you're looking at a graph, and uh, we've got some oval shape and then some line going through it. And we're asked what are the solutions to the system, or what are the most likely solutions for the system. And all we're going to look for Keeping the same idea in mind is where they intersect, where they cross. And there are two points at which they cross. There's one here, and there's one here. So those two points are the solutions. Uh, we just need, of course, the word pairs for them. So that first point here, that looks like it's the point 1, 2. Right? It looks like it's about 1 on the y-axis, or I'm sorry, the x-axis, and then 2 on the y-axis. And then this point down here looks to be about 2, negative 2. All right, so there's your answer, um, just like that. And that's how easy it's going to be on your graphing calculator as well. All right, so let's move right along. This one's kind of the same thing. Uh, it's asking, what is most likely the number of solutions for this system? Now, I made this mistake in the, the video with the non-calculator portion, but because I didn't read the question carefully, but it's only asking us how many solutions there are, not what is the solution. Of course, the solution, if you were to find it, is going to be right here, because it's keeping the, the same idea in mind. It's where the two lines or the two shapes meet. Where do they cross? Where do they intersect? And this meets right here at the point 1, negative 3. Now, that, that would be the answer, but it's only asking us how many answers there are. Now, that just means how many times do these lines intersect? There's only one point at which both of them intersect. There's only one point of intersection. So our answer is option one, because there's only uh, one point of intersection. All right, what is the apparent solution? All right, so we're looking at this again. Same idea in mind. We're trying to find out uh, where the two lines cross. The solution is where the lines intersect. So I've got this parabola shape, this U shape, and uh, this straight line. Now if you look closely, it's pretty obvious that there's a gap between them and they do not intersect. Right? There's a big gap there. They do not intersect. So if there's no points in common, no intersection, then there's no solution either. Alright? Uh, this one's a little bit familiar because it's got those straight lines. But it's the same exact thing again. It's the answer is always where the lines intersect. So the lines intersect here, and that seems to be the point uh, negative 1, 2. Alright, so don't overthink those questions. It's always just where the points cross. Alright. Now this, I guess there's two ways we can go about this. Um, well, since we have a graphing calculator, let's go ahead and use that. Um, you could, in theory, plug in uh, these numbers for x and y and see which ones work, but let's use a calculator let's see how this goes. So let's plug in these two equations in my calculator. So let's clear this all, and let's plug in something here. So what are my equations? I have y equals negative x minus 4, so we're going to have negative x minus 4, and then the other equation is x squared plus x minus 12. So We'll have x squared plus x minus 12. 
All right, so I've got them plugged in. Let's just go ahead and grab them. Remember, the solutions that we're looking for are where the lines meet or where these two cross and intersect. Now, if your graph looks a little different than mine, which I bet it does, it's probably because your window is set off. So let's go ahead and set our windows together. Now, you see the top, there's that gray button to the window on it. We're going to hit it. And typically, we like to start with a negative 10 for the x min, positive 10 for the x max, uh, 1 for the x scale, negative 10 for the y min, and then let's go ahead, usually a positive 10 for the y max is good, and then uh, the y scale can be 1. Don't worry about anything else, just worry about those first six, the x min, the x max, the x scale, the y min, the y max, the y scale. Let's just have it set to these values for now. If we need to change them at all, we certainly can, but uh, let's go ahead and graph this now. Now we have the same window. Now as you saw the first time, these, uh, they had two points where they crossed, right? You can see they cross, I can annotate this, which is cool. Uh, they cross once right here, and they cross once right here. So immediately, if we go back to our question, um, it's definitely not answer choice one or answer choice four. Uh, because this says it only crossed at negative 4, 0, which is not true. There are two points, not just one. And this says that there are no points where they cross. So it's definitely neither of those. Now, let's just look carefully at what those points are to see if it's option 2 or option 3. We look at our calculator. Uh, there's definitely a point, it looks like, here at negative 4, 0. And then this other one, let's kind of map it up. This looks like it's about 2... And then, how old is that? Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. About 2, negative 6, roughly. Um, just a quick look at my, my calculator. The other way you could do this, by the way, if you didn't want to just look like we did, uh, you could just use a trace button and uh, kind of follow along and see uh, how close you can get to that line and see that point. So as you can see, uh, x is about 2, y is about negative 6. So it's probably safe to assume at that point, you know, like I said, it's 2, uh, negative 6. There's a way you can get the real answer, but we'll just, I mean, for, you know, getting close enough is good enough. So it looks like our answer is going to be uh, option 2, for sure. All right, we'll do the exact same thing, pretty much, for uh, this question. What is the solution set for the following system? Let's go ahead and plug these into our calculator. Let's go back to our y equals. Let's clear out this. Let's clear out that. And let me get those equations. So x squared plus 4x plus 3. So let's go ahead. x squared plus 4x plus 3. Oh, got the plus. Please make sure, of course, as you're doing this, that the calculator gets all the inputs. Just double check make sure it's in there right. And the next one is x plus 1. So x plus 1. All right, so it looks like my equations are good. It's worth double checking just to make sure, and it is. So now let's go ahead and graph. The table should be the same. We haven't changed that, so hopefully the table's good enough. Well, let's see. All right, it, it's kind of it's kind of hard to tell, but it looks like um, it's going to cross in two places. It does look like it overlaps the blue a little bit, but. Let's see what the question's asking. The question wants us to know what the solutions are. So there's definitely two points because all the answers have two points. If we look at our calculator, let's see what the points are. Uh, there's one point, looks like, right here and right here. And those would be, roughly, this one looks like it's about uh, negative 2 on x and then 1 for y. And then this one looks like it's about negative 1 for x and 0 for y. So it's kind of hard to tell. You can always zoom in if you want to. Um, how does that work? Let's try it out. Oh, let me erase that. But there's our answer. Uh, let me go ahead and try and zoom it though. Can I zoom in? How does this work? I'm wondering just like you guys here. Alright, how, how, how do I do this? Do I just like hit enter or something? I guess maybe I use my cursor to go near the spot. Uh, let's see. Hit enter. Okay, cool. 
So you can zoom just like that, guys. Now you know. Now you know. You could probably even zoom in even more if you wanted to. But we zoomed in, of course, you can see. Oh, you can also use the trace feature at this point as well if you wanted to. Uh, and get close to those and see what the answers are. So this one, it looks like, again, close to negative 2 on the x, close to negative 1 on the y. And if you scroll all the way to the right, you can do the same thing there. Uh, and it should say something that looks like, like I said, negative 1 for x and then 0 for y. So yeah, it looks like it's about negative 1 for x and then 0, almost 0 for y. So there's our two answer choices, our two answer points. So negative 2, negative 1, and then negative 1, 0. So option 1, option 1, yes. All right. So that's pretty nifty. It's pretty nifty. You do have to do a little bit of work by hand here, even though you have to graph the calculator. It's a little bit unfortunate, but it's not too big a deal, especially compared to what you would have to do um, without a calculator. But we're going to write the second equation um, in regular slope intercept form, trying to get that y by itself. So right now the equation is 3y minus 6x equals 6. Uh, let's go ahead and try to get the y by itself. So let's add 6x to both sides so we can move that 6x. That'll leave me with 3y on the left. And then, be careful, a lot of people will make this mistake, but you can't actually add 6 and 6x together because they're not like terms. So those two terms need to remain separate. So I'm going to write them as 6x plus 6. Now you can't put them together to get 12 or 12x because, like I said, they are not like terms. Uh, they simply are separate terms that need to be written out separately. Now we can divide by 3. Uh, we'll get that y by itself. y would equal 6 by the 3 is going to be 2x and then plus 2. So let's use this equation uh, with the uh, other equation and uh, in our calculator. So go back to our calculator. We're going to go ahead and plug in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the y. It doesn't matter what order you plug these in, by the way. Um, oops, let's clear this one. Let's see, the one I just found was uh, 2x plus 2, so let's go ahead and plug that in before I forget it. And then the other equation was uh, x squared plus 3x minus 4. x squared plus 3 x minus 4. Alright, we should hit graph. I don't know if it's still, it's still zoomed in, so we're probably going to have to uh, adjust our window again, reset it, unless we can see what we need to see here, which doesn't look like we can. So, yeah, we're going to need to, we need, probably going to need to just reset our window. So let's go to the window. Again, let's reset it to back to those norms. Negative 10, positive 10, uh, 1, and then negative 10, positive 10, 1 again. All right, so again, only matters is first 6. So now let's reset it. Let's go ahead and re-graph it. Take a close look. All right. Let's wait for it. All right. And we're, we're just asking us to find the solutions, right? Yeah, so where do these, where do these cross? So these cross, um, you want to use your trace tool, you certainly can. Uh, and scroll all the way down to the left, and all the way up to the right. Um, if you can't tell, if you, if this is just a way to make sure that you're right using the trace tool. So I'm close to the point. It looks like it's about negative 3 for x and negative 4 for y. So let's write that down. Negative 3, negative 4 is a point. And then we can also, come on, continue our way all the way down this long road. Come on, oh, keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, that looks pretty close, and it's about, I would say, the point 2, 6. So negative 3, negative 4, and 2, 6. So it uh, looks like option 1 again. All right, now let's do this on the calculator. Now, this is a little bit different. Again, you need to make sure you can't use the calculator in the beginning because you have to set this up properly first. So let's go ahead and, and do that. We can't use the calculator just yet simply because this system that we have is not written in the correct order. So we need all three of these equations to be in this format. We need it to be in A, X plus B, Y plus C, Z uh, equal to the regular constant. So basically your X term, your Y term, and your Z term all on the left side, and then the regular old-fashioned number on the right side. 
So let's, the first equation, you've got 4y plus 3x on the left side. We need to move the z term over. So since it's a minus 9z, we'll go ahead and add 9z. So, and let's go ahead and rearrange these as well, because the x term, we, we kind of want to write it first. So that equation would be 3x plus 4y, right? It's already over there. Uh, we're going to put the plus 9z on this side as well, and then equal to negative 51. All right, so that's just rearranging. It, that's all it is. Oops, I erased a little bit too much there. Um, rearranging uh, this into the proper form. X term, Y term, Z term, and then the regular number. So in the second equation, we need to do that as well. Um, notice we have the Y on the wrong side. We need to move the Y to the other side. So since it's plus Y, we'll subtract. We'll have a minus Y over there. So it would be, notice there's no x term, right? We're just going to have this minus y term and then the, the minus 5z term equal to 24. And also, if you're looking, you can, you'll probably notice the last equation is already in the right format, thank God. Uh, it's a negative 11x minus 7y minus 12z equal to 55. Uh, we need it to be in this format so that uh, we can plug in the calculator correctly. So uh, it's been a while since I've typed this in the calculator. So uh, please have this on, on somewhere on paper because it's about to be erased. Um, I have it on my board over here. But anyway, let's, uh, let's have a learning experience together. Let's see if we can remember how to type this in the calculator. So let's go, let's clear out of this. Let's just hit second and, and mode and quit. Uh, we're going to need to go to, let's see. I think it's in stat. Or again, like I said, we're learning together here. Edit. No, that's not what I want. Uh, let's see here. Stat. Is it in stat? I think it's in stat. Guys, this is, like I said, a learning experience for me. Or it's not a learning experience, but I just need to remember how we did this. Some of you are probably. Uh, screaming at me for forgetting, but I'll figure it out. I'm pretty sure it was in stat. Could be wrong though. Uh, doesn't look like it. How do we get there? How do we get there? Do we get there? Give me a minute. Oh, I think it's apps. And then this one. Yes, we're going to enter. Yeah, it's definitely this. Okay, so there we go. Let's start from the beginning so that we can remember. All right, took me a while. So the apps button, uh, you should have this, let's try to find this app, P-L-Y-S-N-L-T-2. If you don't have that app, you're going to need to talk to me about how to do this because you're going to, oh, it's going to be some other way of solving it. Um, Alright, so then we're going to hit simultaneous equation solver, which is number two here. And then, alright, so we have three equations with three variables, or three unknowns. So that's, we're going to leave everything there fine. Uh, you want to make sure that you have um, that highlighted, though, three and three. Because we have three equations, right? If you look back at it, we have three equations with three different variables, x, y, and z. So we're going to make sure those are highlighted. So if they weren't highlighted, it was something like this. You know, which probably is by default. You just air over and enter. Make sure it's highlighted. All right, you're good. Now we're going to hit next, which is by hitting the graph button, we get next. And now we need to plug in our system, uh, just like we had it. So let's go ahead and clear out what's already here. Have a reset to zero, zero. Now our system, again, you should have it on paper. The first equation, 
was 3x plus 4y plus 9z equals negative 51. So we're going to hit 3. That's going to be our x. Remember, this has to be in the x, y, z in this order. That's why we ordered it as we did. Uh, we'll hit 4 for the y, and then enter, enter, there we go, and then 9 for the z. And then you see that line that's there is kind of where the equal sign is. So on the right side, we'll have negative 51. All right, now we don't have any x's in the second equation, so we're going to leave that as 0. Uh, and then we have negative 1y, and then we have negative 5z equal to 24. And the last equation is negative 11 for x, negative 7 for y, and negative 12 for z equal to 55. And just like that, we're about ready to solve. We can just double check, make sure you typed in everything correctly, because uh, that would really be unfortunate if we didn't. So it looks good to me. Let's go ahead and hit solve, which is the graph button. And there you go. We got our answers. 4 for x, negative 9 for y, and then negative 3 for z. So we go back to our answer choices. Uh, you, I guess you, on the computer, you would just uh, slide them over, I guess. Probably be a drag and drop sort of thing. But there you see all three answers uh, 4, negative 9, negative 3. Uh, so we're right now, what was it? 4, negative 9, negative 3. There you go, just like that. And then the last one is the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and go back to our calculator. Let's go back to our system. Uh, let's go ahead and let's clear that out and just put in the new numbers. So these numbers are, it's already in the right order, which is nice. So it's 2, 1, 4, 29. 2, 1, 4, 29. And then what's the next equation? Uh, 1, 5, negative 1, 7. 1, 5, negative 1, 7. And then the last equation is negative 2, negative 4, 1, negative 3. Negative 2, negative 4, 1, and negative 3. So let me just double check, make sure I did that right. We just have 2x plus 1y plus 4z equals 29. Yes. Uh, 1x plus 5y minus 1z equals 7. Yes. And then negative 2x, negative 4y. 1z equals a negative 3. Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and solve. And we'll have our answers. There you go. Negative 1, 3, and 7. x equals negative 1, y equals 3, and z equals 7. So our answer choices are definitely there. Uh, you can see them. x equals 1, y equals negative 1, y equals 3, and z equals 7. All right, and that's just like that, guys. You're done. The calculator is uh, very, very helpful. Um, Good, good luck on your quiz. Don't forget those steps. And then remember to adjust your window if you need to. Remember to use the zoom feature if you need to. Uh, remember to use the trace feature if you need to. And don't forget how to plug in these systems either. Just one more time to go over it. Uh, to plug, use these systems, you would need to start by hitting the apps button. Going over to this, PLY, SMLT2, selecting it, and going ahead and hit option number two, and making sure we have three by three, and hitting the next button, and we're good to go. All right, uh, good luck everyone. We'll see you later. Have a good day.